I too close? Is this too close? This is a short video. It's been a couple weeks because I'm insanely busy and, and it's and it's and it's doing damage. But we're getting on top of the pile uh, somehow. Short videos, not very interesting. Actually, very interesting. And and that's all I that's all I got. Enjoy. Okay. See that white arm? Hear that creaking sound? It's trying to move. It's in hot right now. Set it to cold. It'll try. It might make it. But that is. There it goes. It's trying to get to cold. This is directly above the gas pedal, basically. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get to, but. Back to hot. See it fail? Because the teeth are stripped on the actuator motor. Oh, well, it made it. Up is hot and down is cold. I'm gonna replace that actuator. Uh, oof. This is the vent piece that covers it. It sits in there like that and it's retained with one screw down here, one Phillips screw. You might uh, get it so that this this part stays on and this comes off because it's kind of fin a finagle, but that's your down vent that blows it down at your feet. That's where it comes out. All right, you crazy kids. Here we are lying on the cold, cold ground, diagnosing a flex plate. And we have 100% confirmation of this diagnosis. I'm gonna shine my light up here, maybe, possibly. Okay, see that kidney bean shaped opening? The camera's having difficulty focusing but you see the crack in the top, very top of the kidney bean shaped opening? Right there. See it? Center of your screen, see that little line? That line shouldn't be there. That should be continuous. And that's how I know that this, well, you can see it without the light better. That's how I know that this flex plate, 100% for certain is cracked. Now, the way you go to find this, shit, the way you go to, knock the light over, it won't matter is I'm going here. I really need a camera with a handle would be helpful. God damn it. Okay. All right. See these, this hole, and of course, the one behind it that still has the rubber plug in it, you take the plug out. How can it be this tough? Okay. What I'm doing is I'm moving. Would I be able to get four hands on this like this? Here's the light. Come on, light. That's yeah, better than nothing. And I'm taking my screwdriver and I'm worrying. See the bolt move? This thing's moving with zero resistance. It's not, I should be cranking the engine right now. And I'm not. And I can move it in both directions. You're only really to move it clockwise to test. But I am not cranking the engine, certainly. And that is because the flex plate is broken. That is your way you diagnose. And all of that magical diagnostic is contained under this little plate which goes up and you just pry that out with a screwdriver it's kind of a pain in the ass don't be afraid just to put force on it it'll pop right out and even if it didn't then it snaps back in like that that is your flex plate diagnosis this back just so we don't lose anything all right let's go call the customer and tell them the good slash bad news this van was towed here because they thought it needed an engine it does not need an engine it needs a flex plate all right my precious pets here is your special tool this is a three foot long electrical zip tie available at harbor freight or uh, home depot or lowe's or any place like that what makes it work well is that it's white so the pink transmission fluid shows up against it and those serrations grab the fluid which makes it uh, easy to do. This is off, but I want to show you what this what this looks like and what's actually happening here. So this is the transmission pan. If you got under it, you'd see it. And obviously, it has this little cap on it here. You take that cap off. The cap that says, for your pleasure, for dealer use only, you're about to transgress. Feels good, doesn't it? All right, you're going to stick your dipstick in there. And it's pretty obvious how this works. If you were to look at this from the inside, which you never get to do because it's bolted to the front of your transmission, you'll see that the, the, the zip tie comes out this hole. And what it does, this ought to be fun. Just, just 
fat guy get on the ground here. Oh. I'm pretty, in pretty good shape for my age, but my age is rather high. The stick would come down there on the lower left and bottom in a catch in the bottom of the pan. It can't go past the catch. I suppose if you really try, you could get it to go past the catch, but you basically won't. It'll bottom out, you'll pull it out, you read the level on the stick, and there you go. Okay, all right, continuing on, uh, there's many places you can find this information, but that cap I showed you is visible directly straight down under that big wiring bundle that's in the center of your screen. Ow, you're gonna burn yourself repeatedly under this. I feel the cap or my middle finger is pointing there, but you won't be able to see it. But the way you get to it is you come down here, burn your arm on the computer, burn your arm on everything, feel around. My fingers are on it. Oh, that's not so bad. Feel around, ow, hot, and then twist it open. Ah, and it comes off. It is, they are often quite tight. And there she is. Oh, but the reason I'm doing this is I wanna show you about where this zip tie should end up. Okay, so the dip tie is in the tube and I'm pushing it down. It should end up roughly there. It'll be a little different if you go in through this hole. It doesn't, but the point is that I can feel it bottoming in the catch. And I can feel that if I pushed it farther, I mean, if I push it farther, the, the, the zip tie just bends, but that's about that or well, it depends on how you go in there, but you get the idea. You're to check this running in neutral with a parking brake on so you don't run yourself over. And you'll see this one's not running, so there's more fluid on it. But, and this one's due to be changed. But anyway, the last thing you would need to know is the spec, which is basically done from this chart, which you'll see as you go online where this axis is the, temp the internal temperature of the transmission as read by the computer, and this line here is the fluid level. But looking at this chart, it becomes very simple. When the thing is just idling, it'll run around 110 or 120. So you would go up here and you'd say, oh, that's about an inch of fluid. If it's, you've just driven it hard and you're checking it, again, running in neutral, and it gets up to like 170 or even higher, let's call it 180. Um, you would go up here and the median is about 175. So 1.75 inches on your stick. So you would know, like I say, if you just idle it and it's fully warm, but it hasn't been running, you're gonna be in this general area. You're looking for about an inch. The truth is while this chart makes it seem much more, um, needs to be very precise, it actually doesn't. Many modern transmissions do need to be very precisely filled. This one is it's tolerant of overfill to a certain extent and underfill. I imagine you could overfill it by a half an inch or underfill it by a half an inch. It will code if it is actually, um, it knows when it's low on fluid because it monitors its pressure. So if it starts drawing air, the pressure will drop and it will throw a code and it will slip of course, once it's low enough on fluid. So having enough and having too much is fairly, um, it's the word I'm looking for, tolerant in this 62 TE transmission that you shall be servicing or checking. Carry on. Well, there you go. You've wasted many minutes watching uh, nonsense, but you have learned something and that's important. You don't know enough. I know you and I know there's gaps in your knowledge. Uh, that's all I got. Hey, love you. Let's cuddle. I could use a cup and juggle and I'll be in touch.